Hey everyone, it's Michael here from GetFitOver40.com and today's video is called Should the Coronavirus Cause a Worldwide Shutdown and Mass Panic? All right, so probably some people aren't gonna like this video. I'm just making it to just give you information. How you take that information away, what you do with it is completely up to do, up to you. You don't need to agree with me on all of this. Maybe you'll agree with me on some of it. It's just my opinion, and this is what I think of it all. I'm just, I'm not buying into all the mass hysteria. I'm not buying into everything that the government is saying we need to do. Some of it for sure. There's definitely some, some good takeaways of you know, what people need to be doing during these times. I just don't agree with all of it. So I'm gonna kind of read through this because there's so much here and I wanna stay on track and it's just gonna be me reading a lot here. But you will be able to actually go over to getfitover40.com. I'll be attaching a link here in the description where you can read this also if you're, if you're one of the people, the kind of people that likes to read through stuff rather than listen to it, maybe you'll get more out of it that way than you can do so. So I'm making this video to hopefully give everyone an informed idea how the coronavirus compares to other ways you can die and if it really is worthy of causing a worldwide shutdown. Now I'm hoping to create some balance, right? Just, as, just to give you another perspective in this time where the media and government is creating mass hysteria over what I believe is not nearly as bad as it is made out to be. Now this is just my opinion and everyone is entitled to their own opinions, okay? Now, is the coronavirus something that we need to be aware of and take precautions not to get it or at least slow it down? Well, absolutely, especially if you're an elderly person and you have underlying health conditions or you're young and you have underlying health conditions, right? Something you definitely need to be aware of and take huge precautions uh, because it can take you down. Now, is the way it's being handled the best way and the best and in the best interest for everyone young and old? So whether you're young and old. I don't believe it is. I believe for younger people, you know, the risks are so much less or so much dra more drastically reduced, then these precautions maybe shouldn't be the same for every age category. That's kind of how I feel. Is the coronavirus a death sentence or is it even as deadly or dangerous as other threats to our health and our lives? Well, I don't believe so at all. I believe there's way more, uh, you know, greater health risks and death threats out there rather than the coronavirus. And a lot of these things are being downplayed or not even considered by the government. The government isn't really doing much about them. So why is it that the media and the government have taken such a stance and literally created a martial law condition in some places, right? And crippled our society and economy. Why are other forms of illnesses and deaths where the likelihood of you becoming sick and or dying are much greater and not as big a concern to the government. So like, there's a lot of other threats out there. I'm gonna go through them in a bit. So let's take a look at the www.worldometer.info statistics to compare and show what I'm talking about here. Now this is death stats for this year based on the time of this video and article. So let's get in here. Okay, so right now the world population is about 8 billion, just under 8 billion people. We're not gonna go over the de you know births and things like that. Well, deaths as of to, deaths today is 101,000 deaths. Deaths this year, this is important, 13 million so far, okay? So 13 and a half million of deaths, 100,000 deaths today. And uh, that's just from basically January till now we're talking about. Let's go down here and take a look at the health stats. So let's talk about deaths and things like that. But before we do that, let's look at the uh, uh, coronavirus updates and see where we're at with coronavirus. So we're at uh, 417,676 cases with 18,605 deaths. So about 18,500 deaths and over 100,000 recovered people. Now, I'm not sure why the cases versus recovered and deaths, maybe there's people that haven't fully recovered yet, so they're in kind of limbo and we don't know how they're gonna do. But let's, let's just focus on the 18,500 uh, deaths by coronavirus and compare that to Health, okay. So this year, communicable diseases, deaths up until this point this year are at almost 3 million cases, okay? Seasonal flu, 111,000 cases of seasonal flu deaths. Now let's you know, compare that to 18,000 coronaviruses, right? And we've never made people stay home because of the flu or communicable diseases, right? We've never basically said you can't go out, you can't do this social distancing, 
all of these things, you can't go to work because of the flu. And there's still, I mean, yes, there's more cases right now. Maybe there's going to be more cases of coronavirus in the future. There probably will be. But let's just, I mean, look at this all. Deaths, okay, I'm not going to look at deaths of children under five. That's kind of depressing. Abortions, almost 10 million abortion deaths. Now, I don't know, everyone's got a different viewpoint on abortion. Uh, I believe personally that you know, infants, babies, fetuses are humans, and I don't agree with abortion. Um, that's my stance on it, and so those deaths to me are very serious, okay? I take that very seriously. Um, HIV, oh, and, and here's the other thing, deaths of mothers during birth, 70,000 deaths uh, from mothers giving birth. Compare that to 18,500 coronavirus deaths, okay? So apparently, if you're a mom who's pregnant giving birth, you, you should be a lot more worried about dying than getting the coronavirus. HIV, and, and you know what? People still get pregnant, right? And they don't really think about dying. That's usually not the top thing on their mind. They're thinking about giving birth, not dying, okay? So there you go. Um, let's not really worry about the infected AIDS. Let's talk about the deaths from AIDS and HIV. Almost 400,000 deaths from HIV, right? And I know there's, you know, there's obviously the government's taking a stance on using proper protection and all that kind of stuff to try to, to stop that and slow it down, but there's still way more of that going on and way more near coronavirus. Death caused by malaria. So you, malaria, people think of malaria. Is that still a thing? Is that still that a thing? 224,000 deaths compared to 18,500 deaths. And are they making everybody stay home because of malaria? I know it's probably confined to certain areas. So that's probably the cause of that. In certain areas that maybe don't have the medical um, health that we have. But malaria, it's a real thing and it kills a lot more than coronavirus. All right, so deaths caused by smoking. Over 1 million, 1.14 million people die every, or not even every year, up until this point this year from smoking, right? And you're still allowed to go to the store, walk on in there if you're an age and you, of age and you can buy cigarettes. Yet, you know, I'm being told I can't work, I'm gonna lose my job, uh, I can't leave my house if, if I've been in the, wrong, in the wrong situation because of the coronavirus, yet, way more people, like drastically more people die from smoking every year, okay? And they're really not doing anything about that other than the occasional, you know, having to put ugly stickers on cigarette boxes to try to deter people. All right, death caused by alcohol. Okay, so, you know, booze, right? Everybody likes a good drink. 572,000 deaths caused up until this point this year by alcohol, okay? Uh, again, a lot more than 18.5 thousand uh, cases uh, from coronavirus. Suicides, 245,000 deaths by suicide. I have a question for you. All these people losing their jobs, losing their businesses, having to stay home, losing their houses because of these lockdowns and loss of work and loss of everything and the economy being just annihilated. How many people do you think are going to commit suicide this year because of that? I don't know, but I can tell you it's going to go up a lot, okay? So you might be closing the door a little bit on coronavirus by doing this, but you're also opening the door for other things that can kill people. Um, all right, so traffic. Now, this is something I believe will actually go down because of this. Road traffic accident fatalities. That's going to go down because people aren't driving around. They're not allowed to as much. Lockdown situations. A lot of people aren't driving to work. Kids aren't being driven to school. So, yeah, road traffic accident fatalities are going to go down because of all this, but it's not for the right reason, right? So... Um, that's the stats, okay? Now, one thing I want to look at is death rate by age. So we're going to take a look at the, uh, where did it go? Let's go back up to here. We're going to look at death rate statistics by age. Okay. So people under 50, very low risk. So ages 40 to 49, 0.04% of dying from coronavirus. Now, I want you to keep in mind, these stats are from people that they know had it, so that they've been tested. So people that got sick enough that they felt they needed to be tested, right? And then the percentage of those people that were tested that were sick enough that had the symptoms, it was 0.04%. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of people who have already had the coronavirus that probably didn't get that sick, didn't feel the need to get tested, maybe didn't even get symptoms at all, but had it, and obviously those people didn't die or they'd probably be on this list. So 
there's a huge amount of people that have had the coronavirus over and above these stats that would make it look a lot less. But this is like the worst case scenario. Now, 30 to 39, 20 to 29, 10 to 19. So basically from 10 to 39 years old, 0.02% chance of dying from coronavirus. Now, if you're under 10, if you're, if you're nine and under, 0%, no, fa no fatalities. So my point is, if you're young, under 50, even under 60, 50, 50 to 59 is a little, little higher one to 1.3% 1, 1 chance of dying. But you know that's because as you get into your 50s and 60s, there's a bigger risk of you having health conditions, underlying health conditions. If you're in that age group and you're healthy as a horse, then you're probably gonna be fine. It's just that as you get older, your health conditions, serious health conditions start to increase. And that's why older people are dying. And, and to get more in on that, to get more information, why is Italy and Iran, where the, why were they the hardest hit by coronavirus? Well, they're very elderly. A lot of them are in their 80s to 90s. Now, if you look at, um, uh, it's basically that, from that group, 99% of those people that died, so they were in 80s and 90s, had other serious medical conditions going on. So what I'm saying is they weren't healthy. Like they're in their 80s and 90s with health conditions, right? So their time on earth was limited, okay? And the coronavirus was probably either the last straw or may not have even had anything to do with their death. Maybe it was just their time, possibly, right? But let's say it did. Um, these people in their 80s and 90s with underlying health conditions, um, you know, we're all gonna die and living from 80 to 90 is not that bad when you when you take a look at the picture. So if I live to 80 or 90, I'll be health, I'll be pretty happy, you know. You want to obviously live as long as you can and not have some virus take you out, but those are the those are the people that are being affected, right? Those are the people that need to um, distance themselves. They're the ones that need to stay at home, all of that. And I'll get more into that later. So and and of course, you know, in Italy and places like that, uh, I'm not going to. I don't want to stereotypically categorize people, but they're more touchy, kind of huggy, kissy kind of people, you know. And I think the older generation and every generation is going to be a little more stubborn. They're going to be like, "I'm going to hug my grandson. I don't care about no virus," and so easily caught because of those situations. And then they're, you know, they're just prone to bad outcome with the disease. It's unfortunate, but that's what's happened in those locations. Okay. Let's see, what do I have here? You could ask the question if the, this is just something I have here. You could ask the question if it was the coronavirus that killed them or old age and underlying health conditions. Maybe they were going to die shortly. And I pretty much just said this. I'm not trying to un, be unsympathetic here, but it's just, you know, practical information. All right, one huge factor for commonly talked about, one huge factor not commonly talked about as to why Wuhan had such a high ratio of illness and death from the coronavirus. So they also had a fairly high ratio. They were one of the first places hit. And uh, part of the what's not really mentioned a lot is they have an incredibly high toxic, toxicity level. Their air pollution, now it's been talked about, when all the factories shut down, you can see the air pollution just go away when they did their big shutdown. And then all of a sudden, as people went back to work, it went up. So what do you think that air pollution is doing? And this is super toxic air pollution from factories that are just pumping out waste and in incinerations, they're incineration factories. They're incinerating things and it's going right into the air. How do you think that's gonna affect these people's lungs and their ability to fight a virus like this? So that was one reason why there was a lot of deaths in Wuhan, okay? So you gotta keep all of this into consideration when you're looking at the numbers. All right, so how is all of this mass hysteria and isolation the government and media has caused going to affect us in the long run? Well, it will cripple and it is crippling our economy. It is causing a mass recession, okay? It is going to bankrupt businesses and individuals. It is going to spike depression and cases, and cases, I believe, a large increase in suicide and mental illness. People just aren't going to recover from this. Some people will never recover from this. It's going to create even more government and social debt moving forward. It will increase our taxes once this is all over. They're not giving you this money for free. You're going to have to pay it back, and then you're going to have to build your business back up and try to pay off all this debt that you've incurred, you know, probably making less money than before. Okay, keep that in mind, right? There's a possibility of old age pensions being discontinued since young people are not allowed to work right now. And so no pension money and tax money is being collected for the future generations or even like short term. This could, who knows, it's, it could affect us a lot sooner than we think. 
Yes, it will slow down the coronavirus, but will it reduce the overall infection spreading in the end? I don't think so, because there's a lot of many doctors and medical professionals who say that inevitably we are going to all get exposed to the coronavirus. It's just a matter of how long it takes, right? And I guess what the government's trying to do is slow it down so that the spike and the hit on the medical system isn't too much, right? And I kind of want to talk a little bit about that right now. I believe, yeah, it's a bad thing if the medical um, community and doctors and hospitals are getting hit super hard with this, but they'll just have to prioritize the situation, right? You can only see so many people and they'll have to turn people away that, you know, maybe shouldn't even be there in the first place because they're just, you know, they're just going to have to go through the motions of being a little bit sick. Now, people with serious conditions, you know, lung infections, uh, you know, all of that stuff, people with asthma, things like that, people that really do need the care, um, oh, maybe some of them won't get the, the best care during that really high spike. But if we, you know, if we allow everybody to be locked down for a certain period of time, um, what's going to happen is we'll be locked down and they'll say, okay, you know, the cases are going down. We're at a more comfortable level now. You can go out and do your business again. You can try and rebuild your business and go back to work and see if you can kind of get back to where you were, but then all of a sudden, there's gonna be cases that are gonna get through and people are gonna start getting sick again because it's gonna to start to spread faster because people are out and about doing their thing. And guess what, this is just gonna go on and on and it's gonna be waves of them allowing, of making us go and be staying at home and lockdowns and then waves of, okay, you can go back and it's gonna take a long time, right? So what is the solution? I don't really think it's that you know complicated. I, I really think it's just a very simple solution. I think number one, old people over 60 and those with underlying health conditions need to self-isolate, right? And since the older generation are not the main workforce, th this means that a the actual workforce, the younger generation, the people like under 60, under 50, they can go to work, they can continue to pay the bills, they can continue, continue to support the economy, they can continue to pay taxes, they can continue to support the medical system and all of the things that's required to help the, the people that really need it, right? You also need to help out those. We need to help out those people that are in isolation and make sure, they, make sure they're getting taken care of, right? And if we're isolated, that makes it pretty difficult to do that. If you feel sick, stay at home and self-isolate for the right amount of period of time, which right now they are saying is 14 days. If you feel healthy, then go out and about and do your daily activities. Continue social activities. Just be careful. Use hands, no handshaking, uh, no hugging. No kissing, right? Keep extra distance from each other. Wash your hands, use sanitizer on your hands and frequently touched equipment. Common sense stuff, this will slow it down, right? I think enough that we won't get hit as hard but we'll still be able to function and keep our economy going. Now the coronavirus will run its full course no matter what we do. It all comes down to how we allow it to affect us. Do we live in fear and cause a worldwide economic depression or do we tell the coronavirus to go, right, and battle through it, okay? This is just my opinion, um, you know, you got to do what you're supposed to do. I'm not saying that you should just go and, and you know, buck the system to the point where you're, you're doing illegal things or anything like that. I'm just saying that we need to look at all of this information and really reassess what's going on and see what's important. All right, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to watch future GetFitOver40.com videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, take care.